China! Crazy. It's crazy. Who would believe it? Well, Donald, not me. Another day, another unhinged Donald Trump hate rally. China! This time he's shouting in Michigan. But to be honest, it could be anywhere he is today. I met a lot of people backstage just now, and they're all saying, sir, we were doing so much better four years ago. Everybody was. You mean when we couldn't find toilet paper and hundreds of thousands of Americans were dying from a deadly virus that he intentionally failed to control when our economy cratered? Notice in that particular clip, he starts his story with the word, sir. Just to remind us all of his self-aggrandizing importance. He is the biggest cheese in the world, at least in his own head. Here's a clip from one of my new favorite podcasts. I've mentioned it before. It's called Shrinking Trump, where mental health experts discuss Trump's pathology. This is when he tells his sir stories. I don't know mm. if I coined, I coined that phrase, but uh, I started commenting on sir stories because I'd watch all of the rally. And at some point, he would say, well, the generals came in to see me and they said, sir. And then there would be some tall tale, absolute right. fantasy. <laughs> it's a good tale. Uh, tell. Completely <laughs> ignorant of any facts and, and, and very often misrepresenting in a dangerous way uh, what, what our world situation and our national situation is. I loved it when that psychiatrist said that because one of the best examples of the Sir stories is the story that Trump told about telling a NATO nation leader that they were on their own if they did not pay their dues for the U.S. to protect them in NATO, which is like not even a thing. But here you go. One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay? You're delinquent? He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You gotta pay. He pretends to be this stellar negotiator. He is a terrible negotiator. He is a terrible businessman. He has bankrupted virtually anything that he's ever touched. And in this next clip, he's talking about how he got the president of Mexico to agree to send him thousands of troops, apparently to control the border. I'm not exactly sure because his story is so winding and nonsensical. It's hard to figure out what in the heck he's saying. Anyway, he starts talking about a mystery Mexican man who is wearing a beautiful suit. I mean, what in the world? And I had it out a little bit with the president. They said, listen, you and I are friends. Just send me a negotiator, please. And they sent a man, and you've heard this. I told it a couple of times. A handsome man from Mexico, tall, dark, and handsome. He was wearing the most beautiful suit I've ever seen. And I wanted to ask him, who is your tailor? But I said, that's not a good way to start a negotiation. It's just so completely bizarre. Now, in this next clip, psychologists and psychiatrists discuss how Trump's antisocial personality disorder, which is psychopathy, is masking his evolving dementia. It totally made up and bizarre. And so actually, Trump's psychopathy has been the greatest camouflage for his dementia. I agree. Right? Because he I says agree. something crazy. Oh, well, you know, he's just lying again. There he goes again. You know, there right. he goes again, lying. Right. As if lying, you know, oh, oh, as long as he's only lying, we're okay. <laughs> as long as he's. Yeah. But you know what? On Donald Trump's best day, when he is the clearest and his best self, he is a total psychopathic liar. Which means on his most sane day, guys, Donald Trump is still a cold-blooded psychopath. I've said he was one years ago, years ago, when I was when he had first ascended into the presidency. And um, that's just based on my own study and fascination with the criminal mind. I love reading about uh, psychology and criminal minds. And then there were some viewers, I think I said it in a video, who were like, no, that's not what he is. But here are clinical psychologists and psychiatrists who are saying it. Yes, they are, for, for lack of a better term, diagnosing Donald Trump with his psychopathy. And a psychopath, for those of you who don't know, is someone who is supremely narcissistic, devoid of all empathy, 
and they usually have a sadistic side where they actually enjoy sort of getting off on the suffering and humiliation of others in addition to lying as they breathe basically all serial killers are psychopaths hedge fund managers and definitely marjorie taylor green this also describes donald trump to the core he is a dangerous person standing alone now add his dementia in and we are dealing with an even more grave threat if he gets anywhere near the levers of power again. I don't, everybody talks about how scared he is. Everybody laughs at him. I really think that uh, the danger we have, and I know you guys were laughing at him too, and I don't like to laugh at him because he is a dangerous person. Like I said, psychopaths lie as they breathe. Many of the things we did, they wanted to end. We took care of our veterans at a level that nobody's ever seen before. In fact, Republicans blocked veterans' health care expansion repeatedly until Jon Stewart called them out on the carpet so publicly and so badly that they finally yielded. And by the way, the Democrats were always all in on expanding our veterans' uh, medical health benefits. Iran was broke. When Trump was president, Iran was broke. I told China, you can't buy. I told other countries you can't buy the oil. Iran was broke. They were ready to make a deal. We would have made a deal. We would have been very fair. We would have made a deal. And now Iran is rich as hell. They have $250 billion, which they made over the last three and a half years. They're a rich country now. Here we go again. More lies. In fact, it was Donald Trump and his administration who dissolved the Iran nuclear arms treaty, thereby allowing Iran to develop nuclear weapons. It was his administration that basically gave Iran the keys to more power. Insane asylums, their mental institution and our countries being turned into a dumping ground and the entire world is laughing at us. They say how stupid are the leaders of America and they are stupid. Here's a statement from the German chancellor who just met with President Biden at the G7 summit in Italy. Here's what he said, quote, President Biden knows exactly what he is doing and will likely win the election. And he went on in this sit down interview with the journalist to talk about how incredibly versed and competent and knowledgeable President Biden is about foreign affairs. Islamic terrorists into our country, or you can have a president who throws radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country and gets them out fast. Notice in this one, he's slurring, he's slurring. He's, he, you can just tell his brain isn't functioning on all cylinders, and he's spinning yet another lie. It was Trump who invited leaders of the Taliban to Camp David you know, to hang out, to be validated. He also turned a blind eye when Vladimir Putin put bounties on American military service members in Afghanistan. He does not care about our men and women who serve our military, not at all. And while President Biden is leading a booming economy. S&P 500 and NASDAQ hit record closing highs for a fourth session in a row on Thursday. This is what the criminally convicted presumptive Republican nominee is focused on. This went off the CNN. Their light just went off. I watch their light all the time. If I mention anything about voter fraud, they turn their light off because they know it's true. It's unbelievable. No, their light just went off. I can't believe I got about a minute and a half. That cameraman is toast. He's going to be fired immediately. Like I said, another day, another unhinged Donald Trump. And as Dr. John Gartner says. Because I always say to people, look at Donald Trump right now, because that's the best Donald Trump you're ever going to see. Because dementia is a deteriorating illness and his rate of deterioration is accelerating. And yet the press, including this New York Times reporter, her name is Katie Benner, always seem to excuse Trump's crazy behavior in the role at this point. But, yeah, eight years ago, this isn't it's because count. he's not yeah. the president. So mm -hmm. basically, yeah. Joe Biden's pushing up against the fact that as president of the United States, he's always going to be monitored by a press mm -hmm. corps, a press pool, and everything he says is publicized. Donald Trump has the huge advantage of being able to pop up whenever he wants, mm -hmm. throw out a couple of shark questions, and then disappear, which Joe Biden can't do. So no, and that's that's not true, Katie. With all due respect, Donald Trump, while he was president, had the same 
press corps and gaggle around him too. Remember those unhinged pressers where Trump would tell reporters that we just needed to be injecting disinfectants into our bodies to cure COVID when he was drawing on National Weather Service hurricane maps with a Sharpie? Can you imagine the strokes the mainstream media would have if President Biden did just one of those things? By the way, President Biden is having one of the most successful presidencies in terms of policy accomplishments of any president since FDR. Infrastructure projects across the nation. He's expanded Medicaid and Medicare benefits. He's lowered the cost of insulin and asthma inhalers. He broke OPEC's monopoly on oil prices. He reversed the recession path that Trump left us with. He's enacted the first massive climate action in history, appointed more women and judges of color to the federal bench. He's unified NATO after Trump essentially ruined America's reputation on the global stage. I could go on, but I literally don't have time to list all of the Biden administration's accomplishments and what a tremendously successful first term presidency he's having. Yet, do you hear the mainstream media tell us that? No, they're just focused on how old President Biden is. And they are also normalizing Trump's behavior. Well, some of them are now starting to report about Donald Trump's mental health, like, you know, nine years late. Um, they have a different standard for Donald Trump versus President Biden, and that is bullshit. Lastly, Republicans know that Trump is unwell and unhinged. The point is they don't care. They are craven and power hungry. They don't care. They can just slot him in, prop him up, hold on and maintain power watch project 2025 become enacted so don't think that you can convince any of these mega republicans like jd vance or matt gates or any of the uh, of them that donald trump is not mentally fit because they literally do not care here at the midas touch network we are unapologetically pro-democracy we are reporting what the mainstream media won't my name is suri crow thank you so much for joining me here today i do hope to see you back here very soon Please share this video and comment below. I love reading all the comments. I wish I could respond to each and every one of them. But you guys, big love to the Midas Mighty. Peace. Enough. Send it to the big house, not the White House. Get the new exclusive tees, mugs, and stickers right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.